In this mini lecture, I'm going to be speaking about budgets and budgeting. Budgeting is a significant issue in collections management. In recent times, much of the discussion around budgeting in the professional literature has been around coping with diminishing funds. Financial pressure locally and globally has seen budget cuts for libraries of all types. Obviously, budgets impact on many areas of library business. But in the context of this unit, it's important that you have an understanding of how budgets work and of how they are deployed to build collections in various different types of libraries. Let's start out by thinking about what exactly a budget is. There are innumerable definitions of the word budget, but each of them has a similar essence. Budgets are plans that are given in financial terms. They are strategic, goal-driven view of how funding will be allocated and what it will be spent on over a given period of time. Typically, that period for school libraries is a school year. Different school libraries will have varying levels of details, but in essence, they provide a plan for how income will be expended during the period. The goal with budgeting is to ensure that expenditure does not exceed the income of the organisation and that expenditure is undertaken wisely. Reporting and accountability requirements for different types of libraries are linked to their different funding sources. In schools, reporting requirements may differ according to whether it is, it is a state, Catholic or independent school, and it may even differ between schools depending upon the principal and the business manager. Typically, Library budgets are broken down into two categories. The first of these is capital. Capital costs are those that occur irregularly, things like major building projects or major technology upgrades. In schools, this part of the library budget may not be allocated to the teacher librarian. However, in some roles, such as head of digital learning and information, it's possible that responsibility for technology upgrades or investments in platforms may be given. Capital expenditure can also include shelving and furniture, equipment and mobile or fixed technology devices. The second category is operational costs. In a school library, this part of the budget will not include features public libraries might need to account for, such as salaries, rent or electricity. However, operational costs in a school library may include maintenance agreements, such as a regular payment you make for upgrades to the library management system or to SCIS for cataloguing subscription access, subscriptions to journals, magazines, databases, ebooks or audiobook platforms or professional memberships, collection maintenance, which includes the replacement of books as they are worn, lost or new editions are published, collection development, including new fiction, resources to support new or growing curriculum areas, initiatives such as graphic novel collections or maker spaces, and general improvement of the collection to reflect the constantly changing nature of the school community and its needs. Consumables, including backup and storage media, printer supplies, photocopying, laminating, maker space materials or other activity supplies. Marketing costs, including displays, guest speakers, book week or other promotional activities. Resource processing, which is calculated as 15% of what is spent on collection maintenance and development and includes spine label stickers, barcodes, book covering, etc. As well as miscellaneous expenditure. Often a jar of lollies or access to coffee brings teachers into the school library to debrief or vent and then discover new materials and services. For each of these categories, there will be known costs, those that you can calculate based upon previous year's expenditures and discretionary costs, those which will vary depending upon the way the library is being used, the nature of the school community, for example, is it a rapidly growing area where population is changing quickly, do you lose many resources due to fluid staff and school and student populations, or are numbers stable, as well as external factors such as fluctuations in the Australian dollar. 
libraries who buy significant amounts of online or subscription subscription resources from the United States can gain or lose budgetary power as the dollar rises and falls. Allocating known costs can allow you flexibility in al allocating discretionary costs. Other sources of income such as book fairs, book club sales or fundraisers may also need to be accounted for when planning your budget. Monitoring expenses is vital and accountability depends upon being able to report how the budget has been allocated. This includes recording items ordered, keeping accurate records of purchases, having a systematic and accurate method of processing and storing invoices, and cross-checking transaction reports with expenditure. Many library management systems have built-in acquisitions modules, but each library should have documented procedures which are able to be followed to ensure this administrative activity is accurately managed. In many cases, the teacher librarian will be allocated a budget based upon previous years. However, if you are asked to suggest a budget amount, how should you calculate this? If you have a previous year's budget to begin with, the process will begin with those amounts. There will, be a percent, there, will, there will then be a percentage added to cover inflation, and this is done according to different formats of collection material, as rates tend to differ based on where the material is coming from. Then add in a percentage to allow for exchange rate fluctuations. So a little bit of a buffer, just in case the exchange rate goes significantly up or significantly down. Finally, add an estimate for any proposed new activities or projects. For example, adding a new area to the collection or perhaps developing a specific area of the collection retrospectively. If no previous budget is available, the ALEM Manual for Developing Policies and Procedures in Australian School Library Resources, along with Learning for the Future, contains information regarding age, size and maintenance of collections which are acceptable according to school size and need. However, school budgets vary considerably. The 2017 Softlink Australian and New Zealand School Library Survey gives an indication of the variability of school budgets across system, school type and location. Here is an example across the states of Australia. You can see that budgets vary from less than $1,000 up to and including greater than $50,000 depending upon the location of the school. Of course, school size and school type also make a difference to these budgets. Budgeting is a fairly localised practice and during this video I've talked in very generalised terms about budgeting practices. It's not really possible to go into a greater level of detail without focusing on specific organisations or at least specific types of organisations. So let's finish up now with talking about some of the issues with, with budget management generally. The first of these is underspending. Underspending is one of the biggest practical issues in budget management. It's something that all collection managers fear because funds that aren't expended within a particular financial year are unlikely to be provided again by the parent organisation the following year. So you really want to make sure that you get the most out of this year's budget by expending it fully. A linked issue is that of irresponsible spending. While it's incredibly important to ensure that the budget is fully expended, you really don't want to be doing that at the cost of developing a good and robust collection. Sometimes multiple copies are purchased at the same time or resources that wouldn't necessarily meet selecting criteria of the particular organisation are purchased simply to spend funds. This isn't a good practice for many reasons, partly because it's expending money on resources that aren't needed but also because those resources have an ongoing cost involved in managing them. They take up shelf space, for example, that could be occupied by resources that are more appropriate for the collection. Another issue in budget management right now is rapid technological change. The pace of technological change has meant that libraries have had to reallocate funds to different areas of collections in order to de meet demands for things like eBooks. This hasn't always been successful. In the last couple of years in particular, we've seen the ebook marketplace come on in leaps and bounds, 
and it has been difficult for collection managers to predict what level of funding they should be making available for ebook purchases from one year to the next. There are some great resources available to assist you in developing your approach to budgeting, guided of course by the systems your school or workplace already has established. The ALIA Schools Policies and Procedures Guide and the National Library of New Zealand School Library site have practical examples. The soft link survey can also give you insight into how other schools similar to your own are being resourced. As with all aspects of librarianship, budgeting is relational and clear communication with the school administration, business manager or accounts officers is key to a well-developed and managed budget which leads to healthy and robust collections.